All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome back. We are here for day four of this five day soul jumpstart, all about how to share your soul's medicine in three simple steps. So I'm so delighted whether you have been here with us since day one, or maybe you're not caught up with the replays. That's okay. Just be here now, and then you can go back and listen. So today, I want to do a little recap. I'm curious how your weekend was. I'm curious if you were able to spend time receiving from your soul. Remember, I don't even, you know what? I don't even want to say it that way. I don't want to say spend time receiving from your soul. Like it's something that requires all this effort or special time or special circumstances. That's the lie of the ego. Okay. That's what it, our ego structure wants to make us believe that it has to be on times where we have the time where things are flowing smoothly, where everything is going okay, where nobody needs our help. But that's not the type of lifetime we're in, if ever. And so it's really important, right, with what we talked about in practice one on day one, is you're receiving from your soul every day. It is your birthright, and it doesn't require a lot of time. It is simple, but there's all sorts of resistance to it. So I really hope that wherever you are with this practice, practice one, whether you've been receiving from your soul for years and years and years, or it's something that you kind of dip in and out of, or it's something that you're like, oh my gosh, brand new to, at least consciously, you're taking it to the next level, right? This next level of receiving. I went to yoga class this morning which was an action, we're going to talk about action today, which was an action step that I was guided to take and, you know, had lots of resistance, but so glad I went. And when I was there in whatever pose, it was all about hip openers today. It was like, oh, I mean, it might seem so obvious, but it, it like came into my mind, like, oh, let me receive from my soul right now. And it really shifted everything to have that mindfulness. Now, it didn't stay the whole time. Obviously, my mind went in different directions at times. But just to have that moment of like, oh, that's right, even in this, because you practice the intentionality of it, right, of the minute that you're receiving or the 30 seconds, so that it starts to happen automatically during other times of your life. Now, yoga, I know, is a very mindful can be a very mindful soul-led activity. So you would think you would just naturally be thinking, I'm receiving from my soul, but that's not even true. It you Your mind could be somewhere else or you might be really focused on your physical body, especially if you're feeling discomfort as I was. But there was something really profound when I set that intention and I could just feel right that, right? We were talking about, you know, those drawings that my little inner child made the soul plane, and then there's the earth plane. And so I could feel like, yes, I'm having that intention of receiving in that moment. And so that was practice one, right? And practice two is really this, in my book, it's called Naming and Embracing Your Fears. I was really talking about where you un, where you blend with your soul and you unblend from your parts, Right. So I talked about, right. I showed you that little drawing. Where is it? <laughs> here you are, your human self. And then here you have all these parts. Some are inner child parts, some are adult parts. And then I also put, I think the green one is other people's parts. Sometimes we're carrying other people's parts. And if you're, I know we're not going into that as much in this five-day journey, but if you're watching this and you're like, I think I'm carrying other people's parts, it's actually very common. Um, you follow the same process, right? And certainly, you know, if you schedule a breakthrough consultation, when I ask you, when I go through that process of, well, first we do a little meditation and then asking you those questions, right? Asking you just questions to really get clarity on, okay, what it, what is it that's causing the obstacle? to you consistently, because that's what this is about, consistently, no matter what is happening around you, receiving from your soul and taking action. You know, I could certainly help you discern if some of it is that you're holding other people's parts, because those are the only parts that you do release. Those aren't supposed to stay with you. And some of us were trained unconsciously, in some lifetimes, I think consciously, there were old, well, I won't go into that, 
to carry other people's parts. You literally might be the person in your family that was unofficially made the person who carries everyone's burdens, everyone's pain, right? And that is not your job. That is none of our jobs. That is not, that is an old paradigm that actually was never helpful to anyone. So anyway, that's that. These little dark spots are sometimes there's just this heavy, intense energy from the collective, or sometimes people send it to us. That is part of also the parts and that we can get rid of. And then these are past life parts that are also parts of us, right? And, and we, we connect with them a little bit differently. They tend to be stuck in that past life. It's also very common, very normal. So the pra second practice is to become aware of these parts, to bring awareness like, oh my gosh, this is the reason this can feel this, because really this is very simple. You just pause throughout the day and receive from your soul. And then that wall between the soul plane and the earth plane isn't a wall anymore. It's fluid. You know, you can receive from your soul. Your soul gives to you. It's all very beautiful, right? It sounds so amazing. Why is it so challenging? Because we have parts. And why do we have parts? Because we haven't, we're in the earth plane. We signed up for that, right? They're in the earth plane. Humanity forgot that they're one with source that the divine is our source, that we're divine beings. And so practice number two is unblending from them, right? And I gave you that tool of the parts diagram, right? So you could do one specifically on following your soul's guidance. Like, what are the things that come up? What's the resistance? What is the fear? My soul will tell me, will ask me to do something I'm not ready for. My soul, I'll be disappointed by my soul. Or, you know, it'll take too much time. Or what if I can't hear my soul? All of that is coming. It's normal and it's all coming from your parts, right? And then the next day was the same practice on Friday, but I went specifically into your inner child parts, right? Your, and I talked about how there's an aspect of our soul called the soul child well, I mean, I made that name up, right? So, but the soul child. And this is this very important aspect of our soul that's, I put, you know, playful, has so much vitality, joy, faith, innocence, purity, creativity, imagination. It sounds like a child, correct? Except so many of our children, our child parts experience, well, we so many of us experience loss, grief, trauma, programming as children. And I mean like from zero to 19 years old, right? And so connecting with our inner child, when you are on the journey of sharing your soul's medicine, please do not doubt your inner child will get triggered. There's no I really, truly believe there's no exception. There are people that can compartmentalize better, that can like try to shove their inner children in a dungeon inside in their inner world and be like, I'm not listening, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. But they, I mean, you've seen, all of you have seen whether on TV or actually have experienced bosses or people with power who are behaving like angry toddlers. It's because they have a, pain, a toddler inside of them that is in pain. Right. So this inner child work is essential, is important. Now, for most of my clients, it's not so much the angry toddler, although we have those for sure. It's more, it can be more the child that was not given enough love or attention or felt like she had to be perfect or she had to be a good little girl. I'm using female as example right now, but please understand our parts are all different genders. Some don't even have a gender. And all of that gets in, all of that comes up. When you're saying, I'm here to share my soul's medicine and do it as authentically and as courageously as possible, all our inner child parts are going to come up. Some of that is, we need that. We need the gifts of our inner children, but we also need to have a process for working with these inner children, for helping them heal, for bringing them awareness. Now, in this five-day journey, I didn't go through the whole process because it would have taken longer. But I did, the first step is blending with your soul, unblending from your parts and bringing these wounds that your inner child hold to the soul plane so that your soul can start dissolving them. Okay, so that's what we've covered so far. I wanna read something here. Um, Michelle saying, 
Oh, beautiful. Michelle saying, I always get these gentle whispers throughout the day in my ear, receive from your soul. And I stop, pause, take a breath and receive. I love it so much. That is so amazing, Michelle. And I'm so, I just love that whatever you've done in your life, and I don't really know you well, I actually don't know if I've ever met you, Michelle, but I apologize if I have, but um, whatever you've done up to this point, your parts trust you enough. There's enough spaciousness inside of you that at least in this moment, there's not a lot of resistance coming up, right? That it's like, okay, because that's how it is, is these gentle reminders received from your soul. That was what I experienced in yoga class today, right? That I was like, oh, I can receive from my soul right now, right? And so thank you for sharing that, Michelle. So we're going to talk about today taking action. This is the final practice. We're not done today. We're going to be done tomorrow, but this is so important. Taking action is so misunderstood in the earth plane, right? And But I want to say something that's really important. In the soul plane, because remember the theme of this five-day journey, sharing your soul's medicine through your career, could be through your creative projects, through your life's work. And your soul's medicine, I've already shared, right? It's made up of your life training, all the things you've experienced, and your soul's essence, your soul's presence. Your soul is like nobody else's soul. That was one of the gifts that God gave us, that the divine gave us, that the universe gave us, great mystery gave us, whatever you want to call it, that all souls are different, like a, are a, like a fingerprint of the divine. So my soul, even though it's not better than other people's souls, that's not what I'm saying, this is different. It's reflecting certain parts of divinity that no other soul does. Your soul is the same. So Jill's soul, Jojo's, Kimberly's, Laura's, Michelle's, Romana's, Roxana, Teresa, Valerie, all of your souls. If When we travel to the soul plane, which is something we should do all the time, and you do it in your meditation or you know even on your walks, however you do it, if you were to look at the soul planet, everybody's souls, they would all be stunning and gorgeous and beautiful and unique. So our soul's medicine is made up of that uniqueness that you were gifted by the divine. And then when it meets your life circumstances, your life training, right? So for me, that it included a whole bunch of stuff, right? And a lot of it is it's certainly not just the painful experiences, but it's what you did in those painful experiences, how you chose love again and again and again. That doesn't mean that you were never angry and you never judged people and you never made mistakes. No, that's part of the journey. That makes your soul's medicine. But what's really important for you to understand is that in the soul plane, you don't have soul medicine. The soul plane doesn't need medicine. The soul's plane is beautiful. It's healed. There's no need for medicine in the soul plane. Isn't that like amazing? Like when I was tuning in, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, we don't need our medicine in the soul plane because it's healed. Medicine implies there's something that needs healing. The earth plane, the earth, the planet earth, this world needs a lot of healing. Hence, it needs medicine. But the only way it becomes medicine is through action. This is really important for you to know. So you can travel to the soul plane all day long. You can have amazing meditations. You can like talk to your soul and talk to Mother Mary and, and just feel like you're just like floating on air. But if when you are in the earth plane, you're not taking action. And this doesn't mean a ton of action. I'm not talking about hustling and efforting and like, you know, killing yourself, taking action. But if you're not taking action that your soul's guiding you to take, your medicine is wasted. It doesn't get anchored into the earth. There is no heaven on earth. There is no, we're not anchoring the light. That's why you know, to go back, I shared that in the beginning where when my soul first told me, you know, meditation is not an escape. So connecting with the soul plane 
is not about escaping the earth plane. It's about going there and remembering, oh, that's right, I have a soul. That's right, I'm divine. That's right, my soul is connected to source. That's right, everything I'm looking for, my soul has. That's right, my soul has a higher perspective than anybody here in the earth plane and can guide me in the best way. That's right, my soul loves me unconditionally and is always like, I have all these gifts for you. I'm just here waiting for you to receive them. And then I meant to take them into the earth plane. So we have to remember that, that taking action is key, is essential. So we're gonna break that down today. I'm gonna read what other people are saying. Jojo, greetings from Jojo, yes, love it. I love that your inner child has been playful with laughter because this is really important because a lot of times, especially if you are someone, I don't mean Jojo, I mean like everybody. If you're someone who has had times in your life where you've been so busy or maybe now you're so exhausted, you're fatigued, you've taken so much action or maybe, you know, when I left being my job as a seventh grade teacher, my career as a middle school teacher, not only was I tired from being a middle school teacher, which is a lot of work, right, in the Chicago public schools, such amazing, amazing work that teachers do, but I also was super tired from being a mom of five, from going through my very intense divorce, from just a bunch of stuff in childhood and teenagerhood, and I was exhausted. So those, if you have parts like that, if you have parts, you know, here, parts that are like, ah, action. I want to make sure I don't get overwhelmed. I want to make sure I don't overdo. This practice can be really, they can have a lot of resistance and misunderstanding. So we have to have a lot of compassion and clarity when we talk about action. I have some notes here because I want it to be really focused. I want to check here. I said that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I talk about action, I'm not just talking about any old action. We're talking about soul led action, what I call golden action steps. And I know some of you, well, Jill, I think you were, and some of you who are watching the replay were part of the, you know, online group coaching program that I did for years. And we talked about taking golden action steps every week, right? Golden action steps are steps that your soul is guiding you to take. I know that sounds so simple, like, oh, and these golden action steps can literally take a minute or less. Sometimes they take longer. I'm not saying they're always short, but this is what I want you to understand. Your ego structure, and when I say yours, I mean all of ours, right? We've talked about this. You've heard me speak of this. The ego structure is scared that we, is scared of us remembering who we really are. It's nothing, I'm not demonizing the ego structure. It's just doing what it's, was created, was programmed to do, which is to keep us anchored into the earth plane, thinking that we're separate from source or even thinking that there's no source, okay? So the ego structure is always working to keep you disconnected from your soul or to make it more confusing or feel like it's really hard. So when you hear golden action steps and when you hear the practice number three is taking action, please know that the ego structure is going to Flip that around to make it more seem more complicated than it is. And so golden action steps, often you have resistance to taking them. It's almost like you know it's a golden action step when you're putting it off. And you're putting it off when you have resistance to it. When weeks go by and you're like, oh my gosh, I still haven't done that. I still haven't made that phone call. Or it might be, I still haven't scheduled that massage. Or oh, I really feel like I'm supposed to read that book. A month has gone by, right? It's like, those are the steps that fall between the cracks because the ego, which our parts are very attached to the ego structure are especially our unburdened parts. Sorry, not unburdened, our burdened parts, right? You know, we're so caught up in all the other action steps that are so important. And we forget or resist, ignore the ones that are your souls actually saying, those are the ones you need to take, All right? So you can be incredibly busy. So today's Monday, right? So let's say 
I'm going to give you this assignment of taking at least this week, even just one golden action step. And Friday, and you you tune in when we do our little journey today and you're like, okay, I know what the golden action step is. I got it. And Friday comes and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't take that golden action step. But I was so busy. I took like a hundred steps. I did, let me show you my to-do list, how awesome it is. I crossed all this off the list. And I'm not dismissing that. It's important to cross things off the list, but that's really, you can take so much action that you are fatigued and exhausted and nothing changes. You're taking action to create the same patterns over and over and over and over and over again. So I see this often when I have clients that come, when they're coming for the breakthrough consultation and perhaps they've retired or they've changed jobs because their previous job was so exhausting and they hated it and it was so terrible or maybe they retired but they're like, somehow I'm still really busy. Somehow I still don't have time for myself. Like I'm still, even though I don't have that job, I'm still confused. I'm still overwhelmed. You know, why is that? It's because those parts of them are so used to that other pattern, that other cycle, that without even having consciousness of it, they're continuing to take action steps that keep them on the same path. And I say this very lovingly because we all do this. So if there's anything in your life that you're like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I'm repeating the same pattern, that's all it is, right? So it's important that you take golden action steps. Now remember these golden action steps, remember your soul is in the soul plane, right? Here in the soul plane. And in the soul, wait, this is your inner child part. I could do that one, but I want to do that other one. Where is it? This one here. Okay. And in the soul plane, let's just cover the earth plane for right now. Okay. There's your soul. Like, blah, 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 blah. And your soul doesn't have an ego structure. Your soul has pristine vision. So it looks at you, Michelle, Romana, Roxana, Teresa, Valerie, all of you, and all of you watching the replay, Kimberly, Laura, Jojo, Jill, and everyone in the replay, sees your life and knows like, ooh, this is the step she needs to take. I know what results she wants to create. I know her soul's medicine. I know that this is the shortcut. This is the efficient way, right? So think about that. You have this amazing inner advisor, mentor, coach who knows that, who's like, oh, I see that big pothole coming. And sometimes your soul sees a pothole and is like, I love you, but you got to fall in the pothole. That's part of your journey, but I'm going to be here to pick you up, right? It's all part of the journey. But other times your soul's like, you've already fallen in a lot of potholes. You don't need to fall in this one if you don't want to. Like you can skip it now because you've learned a lesson unless you want to learn it again. Okay, you can fall in the pothole, right? So your soul knows, but this is the, the very challenging heroic human journey. From the earth plane, we don't see all that. So when your soul gives you a step, sometimes your earthly little brain, meaning ours, right? It's like, but that doesn't make sense, right? So like when I left teaching, my soul was like, that's what you need to do. Your time here is done. My earth brain was like, uh, I've only been here 10 years. I'm not close to retirement. I just won the Golden Apple Teacher of Distinction Award. I'm getting all these invitations. This is a regular paycheck. My oldest daughter is about to graduate um, eighth grade. I'm going to have all these kids going to college. No, no, this makes no sense. But my soul was like, this is the shortcut. This is actually the way. Now, that's a very dramatic example. So please do not panic. If you're like, oh my gosh, my soul's going to tell me to do something like that. No, that was just my life right then. And partly because I was going to be helping people, you know, I had to become really good at understanding this so I could teach it to others. Right? Or, you know, when I left teaching that first, you know, September that I wasn't teaching and through all these synchronicities, I got a job at a fertility, a holistic fertility center that October. And it was only once a week at first, very few hours, not like a lot of pay. 
I was doing Reiki, helping women who were struggling to get pregnant. I mean, never in a million years did I think that's what I was going to be doing. And even though it was very meaningful work, obviously I could see that. I also was like, does this make sense? Like, I'm not getting a lot of money. I don't think I want to specialize in fertility. Why am I here? But my soul, but it was a clear, yes, this is where you're meant to go, just the way everything unfolded. I was there for three years and now I can look back and see, oh my gosh, my soul was so wise. Those three years just opened my intuition, my psychic gifts that I didn't even know I had. Like it all, it had to happen that way. My soul knew that. My little mind did not. And it can be in smaller things too, right? Like really smaller examples. Those are big examples perhaps, but it can be in smaller examples. It might be, and in fact, I wrote some of these down because I was like, okay, what are some, because this is what I want to say. This is what you hire a coach or a mentor or have a you know professional support with, right? Because it's so easy for us to, I mean, we have, if you're here, I know you have a deep prayer, a deep longing to continue to share your medicine and do it in a way that blesses you in the process, that feels good to you, that's regenerative, that fills you up, that blesses your family and loved ones. And, but it's called a heroic human journey for a reason. It's simple, but not necessarily easy. Oh, thank you, Jill. <laughs> Let me do that now. Jill saying, remember to take pictures of the names. Perfect. Let's do that. Now we're going to do that golden action step right now because <laughs> I want to make sure. Thank you, Jill. So let me put this back in the time. So as I was saying, it's simple, but not easy. Like I, when I talk about this, please understand. I understand how challenging it is. I had, you know, a coaching session with one of my coaches this morning. It was just 20 minutes, but we get a lot done in 20 minutes. And it really was amazing to me how, I mean, obviously I wrote, I literally wrote a book about this. I help my clients with this every day. I am immersed in this. And yet still, when I'm in my own brain and I'm in my own space and I'm feeling my parts get triggered and come up, it can feel very muddy and very confusing and very hard, right? So having support in this human journey, now part of the support is from the ascended masters, from those beautiful allies, but it's also from those earthly helpers, so please, as you're listening to this and you're like, I I need help, don't be afraid to reach out. Now, obviously I'm offering you a, a complimentary breakthrough consultation. I'm here as a coach, but there's also hundreds of other coaches. So it doesn't have to be me necessarily. You'll be led to the person, right? But But if you're feeling like, yeah, I really, you know, I remember hearing somebody talk about it in terms of an athlete, like a spiritual athlete, you know how athletes can have natural talent and yet when they have a coach they can take that talent to this next level right i really feel like when we have a coach it's like like that like we're training for the olympics except in this case it's the olympics of ascension of awakening so what i was going to say this is the list of examples of golden action steps some that might be just so you can see that they come in all shapes and sizes so for example, for you, one of your golden action steps might be to do your interrupter rituals. Interrupter rituals are the pause throughout the day and receive, like Michelle was saying earlier. I think it was Michelle right, who was saying that. Yes. So that might be your golden action steps. Now, for some of you, that might be very, you got that. You can do it. It's not a challenge anymore. So there's going to be others. Sometimes when I start working with clients, that's the first level, right? The first level is almost kind of like setting a foundation of, okay, having your interrupter rituals, parts diagram, right? Like it might be like, oh, your golden action step is just get clear. Okay, what are the parts that are really 
as, as sometimes I say, driving the bus here, right? That are really just um, affecting you so much consciously or unconsciously, right? You might have a part that really believes, well, if I really share my soul's medicine, it means that I have to ignore my loved ones and not help them. And I'm never going to do that. So I'm just, you know, and, and you don't even know that that part's thinking that. So there just keeps being sabotage after sabotage after sabotage. But that's, parts always think in either or black and white. So you, so notice that because that part's thinking either I share my medicine and I follow my soul's calling and then my loved ones suffer because I'm doing that or I help my loved ones, but then I have to martyr myself. I have to suffer and sacrifice. That's coming from your part, right? Anytime we have either or, it's a part, Right. And so your golden action step might be like to do those parts, part diagrams and like really be like, OK, what is the part very lovingly? Right. And bring that part to the soul plane, that burden. Your golden action step could be might be self-care, exercising, changing your nutrition, getting a massage regularly, going on walks. Now, this is remember what I said earlier. Your golden, when it's a true golden action step, there's going to be some, most of the time, many of the times, there will be some resistance. So it's a stretch. So if you're like, ooh, exercise, nutrition, massage, I'm up for it. Yep, totally can do it. Then that's probably, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, do it. But that's probably not the golden action step. You've already like mastered that. Your soul's always stretching you past your comfort zone. Golden action steps stretch you past your comfort zone. But don't be scared. I don't mean like they're going to be terrifying. It might literally be that you've been putting off. You know, I remember, was it last year? Oh my gosh, like time is so odd. I don't remember if it was last year or the year before. Where Mother Mary, it was her guidance. Of course, Mother Mary and my soul are on the same side. It was like, you have to take get a massage once a month for the whole year. Now, I know for some of you, that's like, okay, that's easy. But I'm not a big fan of massages. Like I prefer getting like energy work, craniosacral or Reiki massages, unless it's someone very, very skilled and gifted who could integrate it with energy work. I'm really not, it's not my favorite thing. But that was my golden action step was to commit to that. And the first three months, I wasn't that crazy about it. I mean, I did it, but my mind would wander all over the place. But then it was around the fourth month that things started to really shift during, like, it's like there was a up leveling for me and my, my psychic gifts. It's like, I needed this next level of grounding that this massage was going to create for me. So maybe your golden action step is hiring professional help, a coach, a therapist, a healer, tech support, whatever it is. That could be a golden action step. Maybe your golden action step is meditating. Maybe you already meditate, but your soul's like, you know what? You need shorter meditations throughout the day or actually spend longer time in the morning. I don't know. It'll be what it is for you. Now, your golden action step might be to say no. Maybe there's an opportunity that has come to you that sounds great. But when you tune in, your soul's like, Mm -mm. often this can come with like there can be a time in your soul's journey where you're not getting a lot of clarity quite yet like you're literally your soul might just be saying just wait just keep receiving from me that's the important thing but you have a part that's like ah oh, but I want to take action I want to take action I want to take action you have this urge to take action because that's how you get things done. I have to fill my schedule. This often happens, you know, with my clients who teach classes and they might get a, a guidance. I have experiences where the, your soul saying, you know what, you need to cut back on how many classes you teach. And it's like, ah, because, but no, this is how I get clients. This is how I get students. This is how people meet me. And your soul's like, no, 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 you need to slow it down. And so the soul, the golden action step might be to say no, to cut back. Now, for some of you, your golden action step might be to say yes. There's an invitation. There's something that your soul's guiding you, a class, something. Or maybe uh, 
something you're meant to offer. And you're like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What if nobody shows up? And I was like, but your soul's like, yes, yes, this is the step. So your golden action step might be to say yes. It might be to send an email. It might be to do a call. It might be to do work on your art, whatever your art is. It might be to share your art. It might be to teach a class. It might be to leave a class. It might be to do a post on social media, like a specific post that you've been putting off, putting off, putting off, and your soul's like, well, take that post, you know, put it to do it. It might be telling people what you do. You know, maybe you're starting a side business and your soul's like, you just need to start telling people when they ask you, what do you do to start to say, you know what, I'm a coach. Or you know what? I do psychic readings or I do energy work or I sell this awesome product or I'm working on a book. Now, sometimes your soul might be very much in the, no, you're in the pregnant phase. Don't tell anybody that can be, that's fine too. You might be, your golden action step might be to set a boundary. You know, maybe there's people in your life that you love and I, I know, I remember coaching a client where her daughter lived downstairs. And at first it was very adult daughter. Fun for her to come up and, you know, connect with her and they would kind of bond. But at some point it became very, it was just like very fluid. And this, this very precious time that my client had to herself and to work on her creative projects to share her soul's medicine she just could never count on the time because she always gave the time away, right? It was the end of the day would come and be like, okay, now I can work on my thing. But then she was tired and she was exhausted and she just didn't have the energy for it. So her golden action step was to very lovingly say to her family, including her beloved child, you know what? From this time to this time, I just can't have you visit because I really want to work on this, right? And she said it in her own beautiful words or whatever it was. But that was a big golden action step for her because she needed to have that time that she counted on. Your golden action step might be to do a free offer, right? That maybe, maybe you've been sitting on a class that your soul's been saying, do this class, do it for free the first time or the first month or the whole year. I mean, I don't know. Your soul might be saying that. Or I've coached my clients on both of these on this or I've coached clients that are like, oh, I've been doing this class for free for like a year, but it's clear that their soul is saying it's time to start charging for this class. So that might be it, right? Writing your blog, writing your book, doing a live, reaching out to potential clients, students, reaching out to venues, platforms. I mean, these are just examples, but notice how they come in all shapes and sizes. Jill saying... Ah, release a class. Yes, Jill, that can be one of the hardest things. I know, Roxana, you were in my, when I used to teach meditation in person, I've shared this example many times, but, you know, I, I taught a meditation class in person for, gosh, several years, which I loved. And then came the day my soul was like, kind of similar to when I left seventh grade teaching, I'm realizing was like, it's time to let this go. And it was very hard. It was harder because it was successful, right? Because I like teaching it. People like coming to it. It was a, obviously a, a, a good class to teach, but my soul was like, no, this is taking up space where you need to be doing something else. So definitely a lot of times those leavings, I've had a lot of that in my life. Uh, my, I must be because I've helped my clients with that. There's been a lot of very, you know, the meditation class wasn't so dramatic, but I've had a lot of things in my life that I've had to leave, walk away from that have, I think that a lot of people would have stayed, you know, and, and it, it was very, very hard, you know, to leave and walk away. So this is the thing with golden action steps that's very important. You need to understand that you might not see the result right away. So let's say, for example, that your golden action step is to send an email. So I'll use an example. When my first book came out, I published my book. And then it was like, hmm, who's going to read it? <laughs> it was like, 
And I had to reach out. One of my golden action steps was to reach out to venues. I know some of you attended those events and say, hey, my name is Lisa Espinoza. This is what I do. I wrote this book. You know, are you interested in me coming to talk to you about it? It was the hardest. I mean, now I say it and it seems like the easiest thing. But back then, I mean, I think if you would have said write a term paper, write 10 of them, that would have, I would have preferred that than reaching out to places and basically saying, you know, do you want me to come over and do this free event for you? Or sometimes it was a paid event. And the, your golden action step. So as I was taking those steps, yes, sometimes I think the first one I did, the first venue I reached out to, the person wrote back to me. It was like, oh, I'd love to talk. Send me some more information. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. But then I think I did. I know because I wrote them down. I was keeping that on a folder. Maybe 20 other places I reached out to were either I heard nothing back from or people said, no, we're not interested. This isn't really, this isn't, this isn't what we do or your book doesn't sound like something our audience would be interested in. And so those were my golden action steps to take. Just because I didn't get the result I wanted to get doesn't mean they weren't the golden action steps to take, right? They open, your, your soul knows exactly what needs to happen. So please know that it's like, we need to, it's like we take the golden step action step without attachment and we like, let it go. Like knowing like, okay, even though those 20 venues said no, that's Okay something good's going to come out of it either through those venues or something else that happens. Now, please know that doesn't mean I wasn't disappointed that I didn't want to quit after the third one. You know, fortunately I had my business coach, the first business coach I ever hired who was like, this is normal, Lisa. This is what happens. Get back on the horse. She used to ride horses. So she always would say that get back on the horse. That's what happens when people fall off the horse. They make the mistake of not getting back on the horse right away. And then they develop a terror of getting on the horse. You've got to get back on the horse right away. Right. That's what she would tell me. Right. So that's really important with the golden action step. So if your golden action step is do the interrupter rituals, receive from your soul every day and you're like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you do it for a week and you're like, that was the most boring thing ever. Nothing happened or worse. Maybe you're like, I did it and I felt worse. I would receive from my soul and I'd get really sad or I'd notice how tired I was. That's what would happen to me in the beginning. I was like, oh, my gosh, like I would do that. and I'd be like, I am so tired. How could I get through my day? It felt like torture. I rather, I, you know, a part of me wanted to just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And don't stop and notice how tired you are, right? So let's say yours is interrupter rituals and you're like, I feel worse or this isn't really helping or I'm not getting any cool download or I'm not feeling my soul's love or, you know, but you keep doing it anyway because that's part of the cleansing, the detoxing process. Yes. So Jill's reminding me, she's saying, thank you for modeling this so well. You're welcome. Reaching out to new spaces and saying, do you want to hang out? Yeah, because that's, you know, one of the things I used to teach. And for all of you who are terrified of marketing or selling or putting yourself out there, you know, really what it is, it's, you know, hey, you know, introducing yourself. This is me. This is what I do. Do you want to hang out? That's all it is. I'm Lisa. I'm a spiritual career coach. Do you want to hang out? Of course, I can feel like the hardest thing ever, right? Like, you know, this is me. I talk to angels. Do you want me to help you talk to angels too? Right? Or this is me. I was a teacher and now I create these cool things. You want to try one? It's like we're back in middle school when we're doing that, right? In a dance, asking someone to dance or feeling like nobody's going to ask me to dance or whatever thing gave you the most anxiety. That's why I love I think that's why I taught seventh grade and that's why I've had so much work with teenagers because so many of our inner teenagers get, this brings up so much fear for them. I'm going to get rejected. People are going to think I'm dumb. I'm weird. I'm, you know, asking for too much or that I'm selfish or whatever it is. So let's uh, pause here. Let's do a little sh inner journey, a short one. Well, you know what? Size, length doesn't matter when we're in the soul plane. I didn't talk about that as much, but in the soul plane, there's no time. 
I know our brain can hardly imagine that, but there's no time in the soul plane. It's, you know, A Course in Miracles has this amazing line. It says something like, there's only one direction of time. It doesn't call it the soul plane, but in reality or however. And it's like, the direction is always eternity, infinity, right? So in the soul plane, so when we do inner journeys in the soul plane, that's why you can be in an inner journey and then you come out and you're like, whoa, that was an hour. It felt like 10 minutes. Or you could be in an inner journey that was just three minutes and you're like, oh my gosh, I felt like I was in there forever, right? That's the beauty of the soul plane. That's why we don't need to be attached to how much time we do something for when we're receiving from our soul. Okay, so we're going to do that to go in and ask for your golden action steps for for this week. Let's do it for today. Well, I wrote mine already this morning, but it's like, what's your golden action step for today? What's your golden action step for this week? What's your golden action step for this month? All right, so let's go in. I'm going to burn to take a few cleansing breaths. I think I have one slot maybe left. I just remember speaking of golden action stuff. Um, I'm burning this, but let me put for the for February. If you want to and sign up for um, there it is breakthrough consultation. And if you see it and that time doesn't work, or if it's already filled up, don't hesitate to email me and just say, you know what, I'd really like to schedule one. There were no times. Are there other slots? Or as soon as I open March, I could send you that information. Okay. So what's going? Close your eyes. Take a few deep cleansing breaths. Bring your awareness to your heart and see that golden flame in your heart. And that golden flame Is, is creating this beautiful spotlight coming out of your heart. It's illuminating a golden path that has appeared in front of you now. We, we know this golden path. We went on it before. So see yourself standing on this golden path. And perhaps you're more comfortable with it. You see the golden path. And you notice a few steps ahead, there is that portal that doorway, that entryway into the soul plane. And I just see these like neon glittery lights over the doorway. It says soul plane this way. <laughs> it's like, this is a soul plane entryway. So walk right up to the front of it. And you can, it's like shimmery and glittery. Maybe you're getting goosebumps as you stand in front of it. And this beautiful guardian angel of yours comes and is like sweeping your aura. It's just like just sweeping. If there's anything that isn't yours, oh, if there's any parts that aren't yours, I'm hearing, we're lovingly sending them back to their soul, clearing so that you can really immerse yourself in the soul plane. And now... You're going to step through. We're all going to step through this doorway, our own little doorway, into our soul plane, the soul plane of our soul. And you step through it. And when you get to the other side, you're still on a golden path. But this is like, whoa, this like amazing, like just so much more light, more glitter. You just feel love and joy. It's this beautiful, your soul plane there. You're becoming more familiar with the, the soul plane of your soul. And just let yourself just bask in it for a little bit. Just receive. Breathe it in. Remember your soul's qualities, love, abundance, magnetism, joy, spaciousness, timelessness. Vitality, trust, faith, prosperity. And so as you 
stand there now. Welcome your soul. Your soul is right there in front of you. Maybe it appears as your soul child, you know, like mine appeared with those wings, or maybe it appears more like your adult soul self. You know, these are all just images that your soul uses. But there it is, your soul just beaming at you. And you're so, so happy that you're understanding that all of us are remembering that your soul's medicine is for the earth plane. Your soul is saying that to you. Yes, you're, we don't, it's like your medicine's not needed here in the soul plane. Look around. The soul plane is beautiful and healed. There's no healing needed here. But the soul plane can look and the earth plane and recognize all of the suffering, all of the polarity, all of the forgetfulness. And so your soul is very, very much interested in your medicine and you bringing that medicine to the earth plane. And so your soul is showing you now, very interesting, it's like, like this hologram, this of all of these paths. And she's like, these are all the golden action steps for 2024. She's like, look at it. All the golden action steps that get to your extraordinary goal. Maybe it's an income goal. Maybe it's a goal of starting your own business, whatever your goal is. You're seeing all these golden action steps. Oh, and this is very interesting. Okay. So this is what's happening. I'm going to try to describe it in words. There's two paths. There's one path leading to your extraordinary goal. And if you're like, I don't know what my extraordinary goal, it doesn't matter. Your soul knows, you know, it's in your heart, even if you don't know it in this moment, but maybe you do. And there's the path where you just take regular old steps. You're just doing, 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 hustle, 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 work, 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 procrastinate, 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 put off, put off, put off, get sabotage, get sabotage, get sabotage, help a bunch of other people, a bunch of other people. And you're just almost like you're walking on this like treadmill and not moving forward much. Or you move forward, but then you see how exhausted you are. There's that path. Oh no, your soul. Okay, yeah. Okay, there's that path. <laughs> I'm just going to stay focused. And then there's this other path heading to your extraordinary goal, which is golden steps, your golden action steps. And what's really interesting about this path is that there's a lot of less steps. The other path has like hundreds, thousands of steps, lots of work. This one has steps, but it's not as many. And what's also very interesting is that you're able to see that there's some steps that you take a step that looks little, but it brings you way ahead on the path. You're like, whoa, how is that happening? Your soul is saying, those are quantum steps. So you took that little step, even though you had a resistance, even though maybe it made you uncomfortable, and look at the leap you made. Even if in the earth plane, you don't see it yet. And so you're seeing like, wow, these are the action steps I am meant to take. I've already done it the other way. So all of us have, and there's no judgment. Our soul understands why we did that. But now your soul is offering you another way. And so in this moment, you're asking beautiful soul. And if you have your journal and pen, write it down as you hear it. And if not, don't worry, this is recorded and you will get the replay. You can do it then. Beautiful soul, what is one action step you're guiding me to take today? One action step you're guiding me to take today. Remember, it might be the simplest teeny little step that you're like, really? Or not, might be, but just ask, what's the one golden action step for today? And then you're asking, what's one golden action step for this week? 
And then you're asking what's one golden action step for this month? Today, this week, and when I say this week, I'm seeing that from today to next Monday. And then this month of February. And if you're not hearing anything yet, that's okay. Just receive the answers in your heart. Your heart's filling with golden energy. They're going to become clear at the right time. And now your soul is sending love to any parts of you that might be feeling nervous or anxious about taking these steps. And as you receive that now, you, your soul bows to you with so much reverence. Your soul knows how much courage it requires to be in the earth plane, to have said yes to this noble mission. And so you're walking back, 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 back through the golden portal, back into the earth plane. But notice when you're in the earth plane, look down at yourself and you're like, whoa, look at all this beautiful energy. Feel like, yes, in the earth plane is where I share my medicine. That's what my medicine is for. And then keep walking back towards your heart. Feel your heart with that golden energy. Come back into your body, into your space, wherever you are, home, office, outside, wherever you are. Take some deep breaths and stretch. Drink some water. If there's anything you need to write down, write it down. All right. If you want to share anything about what your golden action steps were, feel free or how the experience was, or maybe you want to share one of your steps or all of your steps. It, it really is reaching our extraordinary goal, one golden action step at a time. Send a renewal today. Beautiful, Jill. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. And again, you know, for everyone to know, there's no comparison, right? Your golden action step might not be a golden action step for somebody else. And somebody else's regular step might be your golden action step, right? So there's no comparison. You have a whole unique curriculum that's your own. Month wasn't clear yet. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. All right, so as we come to the end, I'm going to pull a card. Pull two cards for the group. I got the, you know, the one I've been using, Magical Spirit. And the, oh, I don't have the box here, but the Surrender Deck. All right. So this is all about taking action. So I'm going to pull this for everyone watching the replay, for all of you here live. And tomorrow we have our final day five. Oh, my gosh. I think it's at three. If somebody knows, <laughs> write it down. I can't remember. I think I do think it's at three. And uh, we're going to bring it all together. And yes, three. Okay, thank you. And also, if you have any questions, if there's anything that you're like, ah, oh, I really have this question or I, I feel confused about this or there's this situation, bring it. If I can answer, I will answer. And if not, then I'll know, okay, this is something I can bring into a next class that I do or share in the private Facebook group or whatever it is, right? So really think about, if there's anything, any questions that you have, but we're going to really talk about like, how do we bring it all together? And there's going to be just a little bit more on the actions, the step of taking action, because it's so essential. I mean, they're all so essential, right? It's like, how do they all work together? Like, how do you, this is the thing is like finding the feeling, the fuel that is the right one for you to take ongoing consistent action. It's different for everyone. And it's not, and it's often not the one you think it is, okay? 
All right, so let's do the magical spirit. Talk to us, beautiful soul, about this step, taking action. So what do we need to know? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Number 11, be patient. It will come. The sun, manifestation, power. What is the last? I literally can. Oh, 1111. I was like, what is that word? 1111. Oh, I love that. Okay. It's beautiful. The sun. Right. Be patient. It will come. Manifestation. Power. So this reminds me of the solar plexus chakra, right? Like power. Let yourself receive. So what I'm hearing is if there's something you're chasing, if there's something you want to create and you're chasing it, you're like, ah, oh, chasing it, attached to it. It's like, let go of the chasing. Like nothing likes to be chased, even a goal or a, but it's just like, to me, I'm hearing also like, let it come to you. That doesn't mean you don't take action steps, right? There might be these little, little steps or big steps, but with that energy of like, I'm letting it come to me, I'm not chasing it down. And uh, Valerie saying, I feel guided to keep doing my daily golden actions with more joy. Oh, I'm so glad you said that, Valerie, because yes, I am very good at taking steps. I have parts that are really great at that. For me, my refinement is more about the feel, the feeling I have as I take the steps. And that's the everything, literally. Okay, so let's just do the surrender. And then, oh my gosh, we went over an hour and then we'll be done. So perfect. Surrender the habit of people pleasing. Speak your needs and be true to yourself. Focus on your own happiness instead of always trying to make everyone else happy. This is said from your soul in a very loving way. And what is people pleasing, right? We talked about that one of the days is trying to control other people's response to us. I don't want to disappoint them and then they're sad and then I'm going to feel bad because they're sad. I don't want to say no because then they're going to be mad at me and then I'm going to feel bad because they're mad at me, right? I don't want to raise my prices because they're going to think I'm selfish and I don't want them to think so I'm selfish. I want them to think I'm a good person. Right? We're trying to control other people. So let me read this again. Speak your needs and be true to yourself. Focus on your own happiness instead of always trying to make everyone else happy. Because what your soul is reminding you is that when you do that, ultimately that's when you can really help others connect with their own happiness it's not dependent on you right it's not like i have to make them happy i have to make them happy I, and often we learned that as inner children right we learned to be people pleasers so it's nothing to be ashamed of that's what we were programmed to do right if if you fall into this so here we go notice see where it mean where this is true for you Right. So I've done a lot of healing in this in my life, but of course there's places that it's still true or this card wouldn't have come up for all of us. Right. Just kind of check in. Okay. Where, where do I need to speak my needs? Where do I need to focus on my happiness? Where am I putting other people's happiness before mine? Which is such a mind. How do I say that? It's such a mind twister, right? Because obviously in spiritual truth, we want to be of service. And that's gotten very confused with then the old paradigm of martyrdom. So we're letting that go. All right. Thank you everyone so much. Thank you for hanging in here a little longer today. We will be back tomorrow for our final day. I'm so excited. Um, the Sevilla Circle journey starts tomorrow. I just sent out a blog. I think it was like, are you an ascended master in training? The answer is yes, you are. Okay. And so uh, if you want to join us, I would love for you to do that. There's two spots. Although I do have an interview today with someone at that free exploratory call already scheduled. It's starting tomorrow. So if you're like, oh, I think I want to do this. I'm not sure. That's what the 30 minute exploratory call is for. It's for me to answer your questions, tell you a little more about it and see if you're called to do that, to meet once a month and train as the ascended master that you are. But what's the most, I said in the blog, there's Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, Green Tara, all these ascended masters that are here to mentor you, to help you. But what is their most important mission? To help you mentor with your own master within you. That's what it's about. I love, love leading this journey. So if that calls to you, would love to see you. All right, bye everyone. See you tomorrow.
Bye. Hum. <laughs>